The last piece to this puzzle is this actuator. I've got to see if I can get my hands on one. So this is the actuator that I've got. The plug is missing. The little bleeder is missing. It's broken. I just noticed a hole in the housing here. That's a bummer. Hopefully the internals are okay and I can fix it. The guy did say that it worked, it was just intermittent. All I really need is this little gear, but who knows, maybe, maybe I can make it work. These three screws are gonna be hard to get out. I'm not confident that they will come out. Oh, we'll try anyway. The problem with Phillips bits is they're designed to cam out under torque, so you can't over tighten the bolts. The problem with that is when you go to loosen it, especially if it's rusty, you just end up stripping it out. I'm going to try using this. It's like an impact driver. You hit this end with a hammer, which pushes the bit into the screw and turns this all in one motion. I hopefully can break those screws free with this. And no. Wow, that actually worked. I can't believe that. All right, let's see if we can get this one. I don't believe it. It's actually turning. All right, that one is also loose. Let's see if we can get this last one. Boom, that one turns too. Unbelievable. How about that, eh? Okay, I got all three of them out. Now we're gonna find out how bad this motor really is. Those magnets are supposed to be glued to this, not to that. <laughs> Just a little bit of a O-ring remnant here. That looks pretty. All right. I sprayed these two bolts with some PB Blaster, so hopefully they come out nice. Before I can take them out, I've got to take this little gear off. So for step one is to take this little E-clip out. And hopefully not lose it in the process. Bonus. And then this little gear just comes up. So it does look like somebody's been in here before. I can see some RTV on the edges, so hopefully they aren't too tight. Oh yeah, they're not even tight. And two. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna split these cases. I don't see like a convenient place to do that. This is definitely RTV. Somebody's definitely had this open. The question is, am I going to be able to get it open? Uh, 
Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that does not look good. No siree. It's too bad. Somebody had this open, and they did a decent job of sealing it up. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's got a hole through it. So, um, I'm going to try cleaning this up. You never know. I might be able to get it to a point that it works okay. I didn't buy this with the assumption that I could get it working. Uh, <laughs> These magnets come off all the time. That's not a big deal. I can glue them back in here. Uh, what does concern me is in here, it's quite corroded. Or at least there's a lot of corrosion in there. I don't know if that corrosion is from the rest of this. and It's kind of deposited itself up here. Or if this is the components corroding. Um, the commutator actually looks half okay. Interesting to see what the brushes look like. Mm. So I might see if I can take the the motor shaft out. I'm not sure what that takes to get that out. So believe it or not, that actually still works. <laughs> there might actually be some hope for this thing yet. So I'm going to put these magnets back in this case. One of these is chipped. And the chip is actually still glued in the bottom of this. Apparently even if these completely shatter, if you put them back together, they work just fine. So we're going to put that theory to the test. So we'll put that there. I will glue these in. I'm just putting them in here so I don't lose track of their orientation. That one's next. Cool. So we can put this away. And I, I think you can just pull this out? I don't know. Clean some of the schmoo off of this worm gear. Here, let's do this first. Ooh, yeah, that's not... I don't think that's helpful. So this should just come out just by pulling on it. It certainly doesn't want to though. There we go. Hopefully I didn't break the brushes off. They look okay. Cool. So this worm gear Looks like garbage, but I th think I can probably clean it up. So it probably just needs a visit to the wire wheel. Probably will be okay. It doesn't look bent. But I'll check that a little bit better later on. Looks like there's plenty of copper on here. Ah, this, this part actually looks okay. I can probably fix this part. This part in here he certainly doesn't look very good, but the copper on the wires does not look too bad. The brushes look okay. I can probably clean that up too. Bonus. I'm going to wash these out with some soap and water. You might think that soap and water is a bad choice, but these already had water in it, so whatever. More water is not going to hurt it, I figure. Looks better already. I took the clock spring thing out and the back of this not only has a hole in it, it's also got some pretty sizable cracks in it. 
there does seem to be enough thickness here that I could pretty much fill this all with epoxy. That would probably make this fairly strong, so I might try that. There isn't like a lot of force on this piece. But um, we'll see if I can get the rest of the parts looking nice. I got a little excited and I pulled the wiring out off camera. I ripped this potting compound out and I yanked out, I don't know what you would call this little sensor. I ripped that out and I ripped the brushes out. So I should be able to clean this part up much more effectively now without worrying about damaging any of the electronics. I'm going to scrape out some of the gaskets and see if I can pull this bearing out because that thing is going to have to be replaced, I think. So I'm going to get some tools together and get at it. better already. I'm going to try to get this bearing out next. It's going to be hard. I don't know if there's enough room in behind here for me to actually grab this and pull this out. But we'll see what we can do. My idea is to sneak this bolt up and through this bearing and I'll throw a big washer and a nut on there. So the bolt didn't work but I noticed there's a plug on the other side that's in line with that shaft. If I can take this plug out, I can probably punch that bearing out from this end. Yeah, it's moving. No, oh, it's out. Ta-da! So it's a 608 bearing. All right. I got my parts sandblasted to clean off some of the rust and corrosion. There's some deep pits in this steel part, but eh, it's okay. So I mean it's not perfectly clean and I didn't think it was worth the, the hassle, but this top part is pretty corroded. So the sandblaster blew off a lot of the garbage aluminum. So I blasted on both sides of this, um, you can really see the cracks now. In fact, you can see all the way through. So my thought is, I'll put a piece of tape on this side, and I'll fill this whole area up with everyone's favorite, JB Weld. Then I'll let it sit for a day or so, and we'll go from there. Once that's done, I'm going to come in with my Dremel and I'm going to grind out these cracks and we do the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit of epoxy in the crack on this side. That should make this pretty strong. If I have any epoxy left over, I'll do the same thing up here. I'm just going to fill that and then once this dries, I'll uh, sand it flat with a file. I think that should work out. So I'm going to, I got a little bit of sanding to do, I'm going to sand up the surface a little bit and then we'll mix up some epoxy.
been 24 hours. Let's have a look at what we got. I took some of this tape off while it was still somewhat soft. This is looking pretty good. Take this off the back. Look at that. Nice. So I'm going to grind out these cracks and fill them as well. I almost don't need to, but might as well while I'm at it. And this turned out nice as well. I took the tape off again while it was somewhat tacky. So basically all I gotta do here, sand this flat so I got a nice ceiling surface and this will be good. One of the other things I need to do is glue these magnets back into this casing. I need to be careful that I put them in the right order and I don't mix up their poles because if I do the motor won't spin at all or it will spin really slowly. One of these magnets is chipped and the, the other half of the magnet is stuck at the bottom. Before I took these out I numbered them all so we have one, two, three, and four. The other way you can tell is those two are opposite. That's why they sit together really nice. Whereas these repel in this position. So these two are the same and these two are the same. So we have all the odd numbers on this side and all the even numbers on this side. So if I alternate between even and odd, we should be good to go. I'm not really sure the best adhesive to use for this. Uh, obviously, whatever was used way back when is not the greatest because it came off. I'm probably going to use this. I have heard that the magnets will actually pull this epoxy uh, around the magnet. Um, I don't know if these magnets are strong enough, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape on this side of the magnet so if it does, I can just clean it off super easy. I don't really care if I get epoxy all over here. That's fine with me. But before I can glue these in, I've got to clean off the old adhesive. So I'm going to get some sandpaper and get to work. Sand it off as much as the old glue as I could. And I sanded the inside surface of this, so the, the epoxy should have something really good to bite into. I thought about trying to break this out, but I feel like I'm just going to shatter that, so I'm going to leave it. From what I have read, if I put this magnet in, in the same spot, it'll work just fine. I've never glued magnets before, so this should be interesting. I'll start with the broken one. So I could apply the epoxy to this. But I'm going to try, try putting it on the magnet instead. Oops. Okay, I think we're in business. Let's do one directly opposite. That might be the easiest way to split this. That was number one, now we're going to do number three. I'm going to try to get those exactly opposite. Yeah, that looks about right. I can't remember if I labeled this clockwise or counterclockwise, I'm assuming clockwise. So we'll do number two next and we'll put it right there. Try not to make a huge mess. It's pretty unavoidable. And then we'll put the last one in. Ah. Okay. 
All right. I was thinking of putting some clamps in here, but honestly, I think the magnets will hold this all together. That's it. I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours, and we'll check back on it when it's cured. It's been 24 hours, and this is looking really good. I took the tape off this morning while the epoxy was still somewhat tacky. doesn't look like any of these magnets shifted. Um, I didn't get any JB Weld basically moving around at all. Here's the masking tape I took off. So, probably did not need to do that step, but meh. At least I didn't run the risk of ruining these. So I got a nice little fillet of epoxy on here. I don't think these are going anywhere, at least not anytime soon. Let's have a look at some of the other parts. So I spray painted these silver. Uh, they actually look pretty good. I think it'll, I don't know, make it look less crappy. I'm gonna take some of the masking off. Here's the main one. This is the part you're going to see on the axle, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, I would really like to be able to do a function test to make sure that this motor is actually going to work before I go and seal it all up and grease everything. So I'll probably slap it together to some point that I can test it. I picked up a shiny new bearing to replace this not-so-shiny and not-so-new bearing. So i got to put this guy in here. That'll work. Alright, I threw it somewhat together. Uh, these are the two wires that go up to the brushes. So what I'm hoping to see is that worm gear turn. Oh, this is hard. Here, maybe like that. Vix. Yes. That is friggin' great. Okay, time to put this together for real. There's this little grommet that goes in here to protect the wire. So I'm gonna put that on first. Then we'll put the wires through. And then when they come out the other side, Take them through this hole and out the case. I put some little bread ties on these brushes to hold them in place. And done. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to seal up this hole. There was this rubber plate with a bunch of holes in it sitting over here. And then the rest of it was filled with like a silicone or something, some kind of potting compound. Now the easiest thing would be to seal it from this side, but there's nothing to stop all the sealant from just dropping out. I can install this and then seal it from the back side. This will keep the sealant from falling out, but once I put this thing back in, it's going to block that hole almost completely. So you can see just how bad the access is now. I'm gonna pop this on and see what it looks like. So I pulled all the wires through. You can see that the shorter ones are pulled out just a little bit less. It gives me a little extra room to move this around. That's about as much as I can do. But I had an idea. Couldn't I fill this with JB Weld or something? And then I can get that in there and just... That would work. So, I got this loaded up. Let's give it a go. tip is a little bit small. I did not thin this, by the way.
I'm no expert, but I think this is going to work. So there you go. That is potted with JB Weld. Unfortunately, I gotta let this sit now for 24 hours, but by using this slow setting JB Weld, it's a little bit thinner, and it should be able to seep in to all the little nooks and crannies and give me a nice waterproof seal. Anyway, we'll come back in 24 hours. So this worked great as potting compound. You can see it seeped all the way through these holes. I had these masked with uh, tape so it wouldn't spill out everywhere. So that's the last step that's needed before I can put this back together. So I'm going to have to get some sealant and some grease. We'll slap this thing back together. There is a special grease available from Toyota, but it's crazy expensive. So I'm just going to use some white lithium grease. First thing to do is to install the armature. I've already got the brushes secured out of the way with some little bread ties, so it should be pretty easy. But before I pop this in, I want to put a little bit of grease on it. It rides on a bearing here, so I don't need grease here. But I will need some grease here. I might hold off greasing this for now until I have it installed. But I won't have access to this, so I'm going to put a little bit on here and then pop it in. You know what, might as well grease this worm gear. Okay, that's probably good. And then yeah, this will just... Pop in, come on. Oop, here we go. Just like that. So you can see I would have access to the worm gear, but not the end where the bushing goes. So I think the next step is put that little bushing in. This is the little bushing that goes in the bottom. And this is the little nut that holds it in. So it goes in there. Just going to put a little bit of grease on here. Or in here, rather. Good luck. Just like that. Goes on the ground. No, wait, actually, it goes in here. And this goes on, but I'm going to put some thread sealant on this first. Oh, yeah, it still works. Okay, that's good. Threads in. I'm not going to tighten this all the way because I need to set the end play here. So the next thing that needs to go on is this. A little bit of grease on here because it rides into bushing. A little sealant on this surface and this surface and we can bolt that together. I wanted to use ultra gray on this but I don't have any. Somebody gave me a tube of this a while ago so I'll just use this two locating pins. You can see them here on the cap and you can see the two holes that they correspond with. So this will only go one way. I think the bolt pattern is symmetrical but this will only go down all the way if I line up those two spots. I made sure not to fill them with JB Weld earlier. Now that this cap is on, we can adjust the end play of the worm gear. So right now, there's a decent amount of play back and forth. So I'm going to tighten this to get rid of some of that play. This seems much more reasonable. Just a little bit of movement, but barely any. That should be good. So now it's time to put this in. I've seen some people grease this 
but I don't think this sh surface should have any grease on it because this acts against these little sensor contacts. And if you get grease in between there, I don't think it's going to work properly. So I'm going to put uh, some grease on here just to keep it from rusting any more than it already has. And I'm definitely going to put a lot of grease in these uh, friction points like back here and up front here. And definitely going to coat all of these teeth with grease. Alright, it's time to put this part in, but the orientation is somewhat important. On this half, there's this stop. This stop actually acts against this part. So I need to make sure I put it in the right way. So when this gets assembled, it goes on that way. So the stop is over here. So this should go on the opposite side. Something like that. I'm not going to worry about this orientation because that will sort itself out later. I just need to be able to put this piece back on. This little gear has to go back on. It goes flat side down, so this little raised part goes out. Like that. And then this little E clip goes on and hopefully doesn't shoot across the room. Come on. Just like that. That's it, it's back together. So with any luck, it'll actually work. This isn't 12 volts, but it'll be enough for me to test this. It's alive. It's alive. Hard to believe that this is the same piece of crap that I started with. I'll have to forgive the crudeness of the setup. Got my switch hooked up to the motor, and I've got it temporarily hooked up to like a six volt battery pack that I have lying around. So let's see if it works. So I think this is lock and this is unlock. Now it's locked. Unlocked. So you see I can't unlock it further. Same thing. Once it's locked, can't go any further. Now you can leave it somewhere in the middle, so you have to be careful that you do it all the way. Uh, this will get hooked up to the sensor that's mounted on the diff, but I don't have that. I don't have the diff here, so as you can see, you don't really need it at all. Yeah, that's freaking great. Saved myself like 500 bucks. Ta da! So the actuator works on the bench, but will it actuate the diff? I've got my motor temporarily mounted. It gets mounted through these two studs, which of course aren't here, so it's a little bit wobbly, but anyway. Same temporary switch setup, but this time I have it hooked up to my old car battery. It's not quite 12 volts anymore, but it's better than this. Anyway. Right now it's in the locked position, so I'm going to see if I can unlock it. And it unlocks, and I will put it in the locked position. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. Differential go lock, differential go unlock, differential go lock, differential go unlock, differential go lock, 
Differential go unlocked. Differential go locked. Differential go unlocked. 